start the regular board meeting of February 5th with roll call. Board President Marissa Perez. Here. Board Vice President Martha Camacho Rodriguez. Present. Board Clerk James Cody Berkey. Present. Member Carmen Avalos. Present. Member Zurich Lewis. Present. Member Shin Liu. Absent. Uh, she, she's uh, five minutes late. She'll, she should be here shortly. Member Sandra Salazar. Uh, she will not be attending. Student Trustee Valerie Escobar. Present. And President Superintendent Fierro. Present. Okay, thank you. We will now move on to the Pledge of Allegiance, and I will ask uh, my colleague, uh, Trustee Martha Camacho Rodriguez, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> so hand over your hearts. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We will go ahead and now go to item 1.03, which is agenda organization. So before that, I will go ahead and let everybody know that items 2.08, 2.19, and 6.02 have been removed from the agenda. And items 2.15 and 2.18 are revised as presented. Any other changes? Removed have been 2.08, 2.19, and 6.02. Okay, so we now move on to comments from the audience. So, any comment cards? Anybody wish to speak? Okay, so seeing no comment cards, uh, we will move on to item number 1.05 which are reports and comments from constituent groups. So we'll go ahead and start with Dr. Griffin this time. Go this way. Yeah. Report, okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Kathy Hogue. Okay, and then uh, Dr. Bobby Lee Smart. All right, okay, thank you. Rick, okay, um, Vice President Rick Miranda has a report. Thank you. Thank you. It's gonna be two parts in the moment I wanna I uh, invite up my associate, uh, Dr. Dilsey Perez, to welcome some new um, managers. But first, I'd like to um, <clears throat> quickly present on and remind, we have accreditation. It is accreditation season. Uh, accreditation will be happening February 24th to the 27th. The visiting team will be on ground or on site. Uh, we have forums scheduled. Um, I hope to see uh, all of you participate. Uh, in this, uh, it is a great opportunity to brag about the campus, um, share with the visiting team the great work in which we have all uh, taken a part of here. Um, the ICER, the self-evaluation, is on the w accreditation website, and if you have uh, lost a little track of that, I'll be sure to send that to you um, for your reference. Um, the week coming into the week before accreditation, we'll also be receiving from the visiting team a request of who the team might wanna meet with and uh, have discussions with. So we will be um, scheduling the week coming in. So during the week of, if all of you or any of you can be uh, available, that would be great. This is, a, like I said, a great opportunity for us to share the great work that we do here at Cerritos. Okay. okay, I have one more, but I need my phone. Right. Okay. I'm sorry, Rick, real quick, what were the dates again that you said? February 24th through the 27th. That's a Monday through Thursday. Okay. Monday they will be here uh, later in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Tuesday and Thursday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, they will be on campus from essentially 9 to 5 p.m with two forums. Uh, I can give you those forum dates, open forums right now. Um, <clears throat> on the 25th Tuesday at 3.30 p.m., there's a campus forum. And on Wednesday the 26th at 11 a.m., there is a campus forum. Both are in the Fine Arts uh, building, Fine Arts 133. And then um, on Thursday at 1 p.m. will be the exit report 
from the team. I should also tell you, since we're talking about all the dates, on the 24th they, they will be here uh, predominantly in the afternoon uh, for a campus tour and team arrival and a somewhat of a meet and greet with uh, some of the leadership. So um, if you're available, um, we'd be happy to have you join with us at that time. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like to invite up and introduce to the board Dr. Linda Clowers. She is our new Dean of Academic Affairs and Strategic Initiatives. She started on the 21st. Linda was previously Associate Dean of Academic Affairs at uh, our neighboring campus, uh, El Camino College. She was previously the Director of General Education and Executive Director of Campus Dean at American Career College, Vice President of Academic Affairs at Pacific Oaks College, Dean of Curriculum, Retention, and Educational Services at West LA College, Director of Liberal Studies Program at Loyal Mar Marymount University, Associate Professor at Azusa Pacific University and Assistant Professor at Arizona State University and one more, mm -hmm. Mental Health Counselor at Azusa Head Start Program. She earned her bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in counseling psychology um, and teacher credential from UCLA and a PhD in counseling psychology from UC Santa Barbara. She's presented at many conferences on student success, inclusi inclusivity, psychology and program effectiveness and has written professional publications. During her free time, <laughs> Linda loves to solve logic puzzles and is on her quest for fame on the karaoke circuit. <laughs> she even has a karaoke name, stage name, but I'll, I'll let you find her. So again, uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Linda Clowers. Thank you. Thank you. Very yeah. Thank you. Dr. Perez? Good evening, I am excited to introduce you to our new Dean of Student Equity and Success. I will ask Dr. Lucito Amador to join me. Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Amador goes by Louie, just so that you know. Um, but he started on January 27th, and prior to coming to Cerritos College, he was the director of EOP at CSU LA, and was also, previous to that, the director of Student Equity at Long Beach City College. He has served as the director of a Veterans Resource Center at multiple campuses and has also served as a Multicultural Center Coordinator and Associate Director at CSU Dominguez Hills in the Office of Student Life. He also worked at Student Activities Coordinator at Kenyatta College. Uh, um, your list is long. Asian and Pacific Islander Student Center Coordinator and also a lecturer at Cal Poly Pomona, lecturer at CSU Dominguez Hills, and assistant professor at Loyola Marymount University. He earned a bachelor's in politics from UC Santa Cruz, a master's degree in cultural studies from Claremont Graduate University, and a doctorate in education from CSU Long Beach. He has no time to do anything fun after hours. <laughs> I know he does a lot of exercise. He went to Dr. Fierro's spin class last night, and I, and I was like, oh, how great. Uh, he said he did well until the last 10 minutes. <laughs> um, so, but he's going back next week, so we know that he loves fitness and spending time with his family, and Dr. Miller uh, shared a art um, project oh that he God. had done for her, <laughs> so he is very artistic as well, so very talented. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Armador. Right. Thank you very much, and welcome to our two new um, employees. We're glad to have you and welcome you here at Cerritos College. So very excited for all the work you're going to do on behalf of our students. So thank you. All right. Um, we will now move on to um, the consent calendar. So are, is there any um, items that any of the board members would like to pull for discussion on the consent decree? On the consent, sorry, calendar. Anybody? Nope. Okay. So seeing then, we will go ahead and take a motion for the consent calendar with those with item 2.08 and 2.19 removed. Okay. So we have a motion. Second. Okay. So we have a motion and we have a second. So seeing no objection, the consent calendar has been approved. 
We move on to item 3.01, which is an informational item on the College Coordinating Committee meetings from October 28th, November 25th, and December 2nd. Do you have a motion to receive and file? Receive and file. Okay. So there's a motion. Second. Second. All right. So seeing no objection, we have a motion and a second. That item has been approved for as a receive and file. Um, we will move on to item number four. Administrative items, which is consideration of approval of nominees for a triple CT board meeting. Triple CT board election, sorry. All right. I think it's our last item. Um, sorry? Board, uh, as is oh, this is it. Um, 4.02. It's me. Oh, yeah, the last right. representative yes. was Marisa. I know, sorry. <laughs> yes, I need to be. Um, do you need renominated to for my second term. Oh, oh okay. yes, yes, I believe I can serve three three-year terms. Okay. So I would need um, to be nominated by our board for a second term. I make a motion to nominate you for your second term. Second. Okay. okay. Yeah. Has it already right. been three years? Yes, wow. three years already. I'm still looking well, for you. <laughs> 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 All right. So okay. So we have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. So seem no objection. The item has been approved. All right, so now we will move to item number 4.03, which is consideration of approval of resolution number 20-0205A, authorizing the investigation of the feasibility of local facility funding sources. So we will uh, turn to Dr. Fierro for a staff presentation on this item. Yeah, um, so we'll have uh, Vice President Lopez is gonna give us a brief um, presentation, brief presentation. <laughs> on the, the background the or the background of um, our facilities program uh, on our current facilities master plan and what the resolution is asking the board to do at this uh, specific time welcome board members um, so this resolution I just wanted to give a brief um, summary of kind of uh, past ex um, on our uh, past bonds so our measure CC, which was approved in 2004, was for $210 million. This measure has been completely spent down um, at this time. Um, and then our measure G, which is our current funding source, um, that had a total authorization of $350 million. We have only $75 million remaining to be issued at this point. Okay. Of the remaining $75 million left to be issued, um, consists of the following projects. So these funds basically have been already, we have already obligated the entire amount of what's left in our bond program, which is the completion of our health and wellness complex, our performing arts center, um, health science renovation project, which is our uh, state funded uh, project as well, our shade structures, emergency uh, or energy management system upgrades, um, and I have student services and, in quotes, administration building. So I need to kind of pause here to explain this. So with our current funding with the Measure G, um, we only have enough funds to complete the student services side of this project. Um, if, for some reason, we elect not to go out for another measure, um, the, we designed this building purposely to have basically a two buildings, but these two buildings are, are definitely um, interlinked together, but that does have ability to build one or the other if, if uh, need be. But our current bond, we would be able to uh, utilize to build the student services, and that's dependent if we don't have any additional funds um, moving forward. And so... So that's Measure G. So basically, Measure G at this point is spoken for. As you know, um, just for clarification on uh, Major G, you are saying the although it's listed as student services and administration building, the only one currently on the book and budget for is student services, correct? Right. That's the only part that we would be able to complete without any additional funding sources. 
as you know, in 2019, we completed and approved the new facilities master plan. Uh, this is a rough estimate, so we began to look at the total cost if we were going to successfully complete the entire master plan as, as, as it was approved in 2019. That has an estimated cost of about $400 million. Um, projects that are included in there, but this is not an exhausted list of it. I just wanted to highlight some few ones in there is the, the completion of the administration building, which is part of the student services uh, and admin building. Um, it does also include three new instructional uh, buildings, um, our CTE building, a new community ed adult education building, a new campus police building, a child development center, a new stadium and field house, technology upgrades, and repairs and upgrades for safety and accessibility. I do have three asterisks on three of the projects up there, which is what um, these are part of our capital outlay projects that we have submitted um, uh, proposals to the state to be state funded projects. However, for us to qualify for a state funded project, we have to have 50% match. So again, without a new measure, um, we would not be able to secure these state dollars for these three projects. And so I just wanted to make that an emphasis. So that's kind of the framework of our, our bond program past and mo moving forward. So the current resolution that, that is uh, in front of you for approval today, really that resolution is to authorize to begin to a, a solicit a firm to conduct a community opinion survey. So um, we would uh, um, solicit, go out to RFP, um, and then bring back to the board for approval this consultant to be able to use uh, to really determine what's the likelihood of a, a, a new bond um, if we elected to put a new uh, bond on the November ballot. Um, and based on those results, we would provide a report back to the board to report those findings um, no later than May 20th. Um, and the reason why we would want to do it no later than May 20th because there's a number of other steps we need to complete if we are going to continue down this path. And so this only provides information to the board of what, you know, what are the opinion of, of the community members? What is the likelihood of, of, of a bond being passed? Um, and so, Part of that process, if we were going to put a November bond election, is obviously number one would be adopt uh, the resolution authorizing us to move towards that direction. Um, during this February time frame, we would we would begin determining the bond size, debt capacity, tax rates, and the basically the bond um, um, sale timing of to complete the phasing of these projects. Um, obviously, you know that the facilities master plan is probably a rough estimate of about $400 million, so we would start there. But once we would go through the, um, the community um, um, opinion survey, we would kind of narrow down well, what is a, a favorable bond size that the voters would likely pass. Um, and then we would go through an analysis of our debt capacity, which we are already um, have done. Um, debt capacity just limits the amount of dollars that we can go out um, and, and have the voters approved. Our debt capacity, given our um, community and tax rate, is fairly high, and so we, are, we would probably never be in the jeopardy of getting anywhere close to our debt capacity. Um, so we're in really good standing uh, when it comes to that. Um, we would also work with the consultant to draft um, voter opinion survey questionnaire. So we would be part of the, the process of determining what do we want to ask um, our community members. Um, so uh, we would try to get that done sometime in March of 2020. Uh, again, then uh, evaluate the polling results. As I mentioned, no later than May, and we would provide the board um, those results. Um, and then determine whether or not there's any adjustments that we need to do to the bond size, the timing of the sale. Um, it also would, would tell us whether or not, you know, do we commit to the likelihood of, of, of it being successful in November. Um, and, or we could just delay to a future date. 
Um, and again, based on that May date, um, uh, two other critical dates is um, the adoption of a resolution calling for the board um, um, for the bond election. That will likely need to be done by July, sometime in July. And the drop dead date is I have to deliver um, the resolution along with the tax statement to the registrar's office no later than August 7th. That is the deadline to get it on the November ballot. Um, so um, happy to take any questions, but this is a quick summary of what the resolution is about. Again, it's just kind of starting a feasibility study giving us some data to determine what the likelihood um, of the voters would be to to pass a new bond um, and, and such. Do we typically conduct any sort of um, information, um, I don't want to say campaign, but in innovation effort or information effort for the public between uh, making an effort in this case um, and that, or deciding to put something on the ballot and the uh, ballot actually being so voted on? Funded by the district? No, we would not. Um, district, we cannot use public dollars to campaign for any particular measure. We can put out informational, that is a kind of a bipartisan message, um, but we could not solicit and do that. Um, we would. Uh, there ha would have to be a formation of a campaign committee um, and that would uh, uh, get outside dollars to be able to fund those type of, of messages. But, but we would want to make sure that people had all the information they needed in True. order to make a decision. Yes, that would be part of that, that body to, to assist in that. Just to, I'm sorry, excuse me, just to clarify what Trustee Berkey is saying. Um, well, I think I understand is that there's kind of, I feel like there's two components because I understand the campaign portion very well but there's also an educational portion that we as a district could be considering as well I know they did that at ABC Unified recently for their last school bond um, where it was the district putting out factual information about what the needs were that, of that. So that, I think, is that what you're asking? Because I think you know, that's really important. what we would use right. that yeah. for and how this plays into our education. That would be a perfect thing for, for us to do, yeah. and that would be something that, of course, would be recommended for us to do. And, you know, another idea, too, is really kind of showcase what we have done on the campus uh, with the past bond dollars. Um, and so we would want to make, sh you know, put on a good face of what we have done with, with, with our buildings on a campus and then put out factual information about um, um, the buildings and what needs that, that, w that still need to be addressed. And so that would happen between July and November, or do we have a strategy related to? So that would probably happen once, um, once the board determines and adopts a resolution calling for the, um, and there's a, m a laundry list of different things that would play into this, but once the board would adopt the um, election, that would then kick us into gear of forming a outside committee, um, getting in contract with a potential um, strategist, um, and kind of developing some type of, of campaign that would help align us uh, with that. But then we would then begin, and we can even begin now with the information and now, because th that's something that we could do, uh, we don't have to necessarily wait uh, for that date. But from an informational standpoint of showing need, we can start working on that sooner than later um, to be able to start putting messages out there regarding that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think that makes sense since folks are, it seems like the community generally really supports us and has historically supported us with these kinds of efforts. Um, and more information that they have available, the better. If, they're, if they have a major decision coming up, whether it's this November or, or a following one. Trustee mm -hmm. Ellis? Just a quick question. So our first, our last uh, bond measure was approved when? Uh, 2012. Okay, and prior to that we had another bond. Which 2004. Was? Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to, to look at, you know, what that's looking like for our community. Um, I don't think anyone would disagree that we've done uh, quite a bit of work here on campus 
you know, I think former students that come are really amazed at how beautiful it's starting to look. Yeah. And, you know, just really excited to see what's happening for our current and future students. Um, I'm just concerned about, um, you know, when will our taxpayers um, be done paying off all of these debts, right? I know that my tax property tax bill keeps going up and up and up. And, you know, I appreciate everything we're doing. I think our community deserves really stellar and beautiful buildings and something that will last, uh, you know, a very long time for many generations. But, you know, I also recognize that we have a lot of folks in our community that, who are now retired and who, you know, are looking at really just, um, you know, budgeting for the upcoming years in their golden years. So what is that really going to look like in terms of what that amount might look like for our right. taxpayers? Yeah. And we can put more information on when we start going down that, but a typical right. measure uh, for community college, because we are different than the, our K-12 uh, K um, uh, folks, mm -hmm. but um, on the new measure, we are limited to a maximum of $25 per 100,000 assessed value. Okay. Um, that, that is the tax limit um, that would be assessed on a property value. And so um, again, <coughs> if, if a, for example, if you have a house that has an assessed value of three hundred thousand, that that, annual where's that in this yeah. community? Where does I, that I, exist? I, I so that's no. That's for that's for that's example, assessed assess value. Yes. Okay, I'm yes. just like really. Yes. <laughs> yeah, assessed value. Yeah, assessed value is different than your sell price or what you think your house would sell for, um, and so that's what is is what drives this. So it's your actual assessed value that is done by the county. Um, and for example, if your assessed value is 300,000, um, a new measure would then be $75 per year um, um, in additional property taxes. Um, something else that we could do is um, time the issuances of the bonds uh, to see when the first issuances will fall off the books. Uh, because when we started in 2004, obviously, there are some that are older than others, so we can yeah. look at some of the... And I, I plan during this process to provide information on, on the tax, because those are going to be questions that are pop up, and we should be right. straightforward on what, what those are. Um, most bonds, when we issue bonds, are 25-year bonds. Um, it hasn't been 25 years since the 2004. And so, but we could show what the... And what we need to do is show the compounding effects of measure CC with measure G with a potential new measure um, on that. And so, um, but that's something that we would want to share um, because we, we just need to be upfront with that, that topic. I think so. I think that would honestly just clear a lot of things for a lot of people. I know as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, is that in addition to what we already have on top of what we already have? Yes, it's on top of what you already have. And as you know, a lot of cities across our area are looking at increasing their own tax, sales yeah. tax. So on top of that, we've got, you know, our general sales tax. And then you just mentioned ABC, you know, ABC, you know, exactly. any of the so people within the district of ABC, you know, they, they recently passed their bond. And uh, K-12 has a much higher tax rate, um, and uh, so it's beyond $25 per assessed value. Right. I, I think in some of them it, it's up to about $50. I, I'm not too sure on, on that, but, um, but ours is at 25 We could determine mm. to make that even less. Mm. We could say a tax rate no more than $20 per 100000 assessed value. Mm -hmm. um, we do have flexibility on lowering we don't need to go up to the cap of 25 we can actually put in the ballot language that we would come in less than that cap um, and so um, and we can do some analysis of what that does uh, for any future um, issuances because um, depending on property values uh, from from the district that that could play a, a role down the line on that could cause us some problems where we're not able to issue bonds because we're we're getting capped out too quickly on the on the twenty dollars versus the twenty five, and so there's some give and take on on that, and we would we would put provide some analysis on what something could look like if we issued bonds every five years. What what would the tax rate look like uh, moving forward? 
I think, you know, as, as we move forward and even as we're thinking about this in terms of what goes out to the public, I think this is very important. I think the clearer that we are, the more concise that we are, the easier it will be for folks to really understand what we're doing okay. and how we're really supporting some of the needs of the students. So thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Just a clarification. Mm -hmm. So your $25 example would be the maximum, that's the cap amount, not necessarily yeah. the individual amount that we would be floating in this particular effort if we were to have a bond measure? Is that correct? That's the that's the cap on total property taxes sustainable to the community college district. For this measure, yes. 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 Furthermore, this is, you're seeking approval for us to investigate how to um, size um, a potential bond measure if we were to go for one. We would, that would be part of it. We would poll, we would get a survey, we would provide results, evaluating polling results and the likelihood of, an example, if, if the polling rates are in the 40s, you know, we need 55% a passing rate um, to pass uh, this bond. If the polling rates are in the low 40s, our recommendation would be not to put this on the ballot because it costs money to put it on the ballot. Yeah. And so this provides us um, a roadmap of what the next step could look like. Um, if, if the polling results show we're in the 60 to 70%, which is fantastic, our recommendation would be, yes, this bond is likely to be successful. We would continue down that path. Um, but part of the questionnaire, we would start playing with the, the numbers and trying to figure out what is the likelihood of a certain dollar amount to be passed. And so the elasticity of demand. Is that for all the economics nerds in here? Is that what you're looking for? Yes. So, um, and we would, we, that recommendation would be part of that result we would provide back to the board saying, based on those survey results, this, you know, four, 350, for example, pulled better than 400 or vice versa. Thank you. That's all my questions on this brief presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do have a yes, question. Yes, go ahead, Trustee so Lewis. Regarding the uh, polling, are there, any specific planned projects that will be included as part of that polling, you know, because you could say, you know, are you going to, are you willing to spend a hundred million, five hundred million, yeah. three billion dollars? But what is that actually going to get me? To right, the, the and and that's what part of that would do is is we would start with the master plan, um, all the projects in the master plan, um, and provide some, you know, information on questionnaires regarding you know, what type of, because those are going to be questions that are going to be asked, and we can, like I, I mentioned before, here is some of those projects, for example, that this is not an exhausted list of them, but this is uh, a very large portion of the projects that we would be potentially including in the questionnaire um, with some consult, um, uh, you know, obviously we would consult with our, our consultant to figure out what's, you know, what's the best way to, to question, you know, put these together. All right. So, when would we expect to know if we're going to have the, some of these projects, the ones that are asterisk, um, funded by the state through the new propositions that um, would potentially be passed? So, um, that that is a really good question, and the two are connected. So, we will only receive funding through the state if the Prop 13 major passes in March, right? So if it passes, it will be, you know, several months, maybe next legislative session, the funds are allocated. But we will have to have 50% of the funding needed to complete the project. So let's say the state <laughs> says that they're gonna help us with half of the CTE building. As soon as they issue that, we receive documentation in which we have to sign certifying that we do have the ability of providing the other 50%. So if we don't have those dollars, we won't get the fund from the state, and at this particular time, all of our dollars are committed, so we wouldn't be able to uh, access the state dollars either, at least on their current um, regulations. Um, the, the other part on this uh, polling is to present the, the master plan uh, the facilities master plan, and we have had conversations into leaving language open for purchase of uh, land or facilities within the district. 
Um, this is obviously a long-term projections and, and we have never obviously anticipated, for instance, acquiring the facility uh, for the student housing, but we don't know what in five, 10 years could happen. So we um, have spoken on leaving the possibility of um, polling people also and whether or not that will be something attractive. To um, add on to that comment, when are we going to prioritize these projects? Because I'm assuming the $400 million is not going to cover all these costs. I mean, there's a lot of projects on here. True. So when would we prioritize that? So the 400000 is an estimate to complete the entire master plan. So, you know, again, that's a rough estimate, give or take, on it. So that would be all-inclusive of all those projects you see there, plus some that are not on that list. Within the facilities master plan, there is a phasing in mm -hmm. a schedule, and we would uh, basically model that schedule on there. Again, we're not stuck to a phasing in schedule, but that would be kind of where we would start our prioritization on that. Uh, because of the amount of new buildings coming on, it's pretty critical on sequencing mm -hmm. um, on there. And so that's how we phased our plan um, to move through this the, the project. So these are not in any particular order, um, but we would follow the phasing sequence that's in our facilities master plan that we went through uh, methodically to figure out on sequencing um, buildings, swing space, um, things of that sort um, because with any new construction we also have to look at we're going to displace you know potential departments we need to put them somewhere where do we put them somewhere and so we have to be methodical with the uh, sequencing of swing space as well so I know last time um, I don't think we got hard copies of the facilities master plan this time around so we could get a copy to each one of the trustees Remember we had it last time, the really nice bounded ones with yep. all the colored pictures, because I think that's going to be a really important okay. I will, um, I resource for us moving forward. Um, I have another question going to section two of the now therefore it be it resolved. So everyone can go to that section. Um, section two. So I guess my question is, what exactly are we approving today? Because when I'm reading section two, it's talks about more than just a community opinion survey. It says, to further such investigated, including the conduct of an updated community opinion survey, which I know we just talked about, but then it talks about the engagement of a municipal advisor for financial services, a law firm to provide bond and legal counsel, a communications consulting firm, and to submit such additional information resulting from such analysis to the board at subsequent meetings. Yes. So, so are we just approving an RFP to go out to to accomplish the one item on updated community opinion survey, or by approving this resolution, are we approving the other things as well? So technically, you're approving the other things as well. But what I would say on those other ones is we um, we already have a financial advisor. We already have a bond um, bond council mm -hmm. um, that will dictate so w this is not going to cost us any additional cost on that the only really new item that we need to do is start is, is really the updating of the community um, opinion sur survey on that so because we've already uh, part of we're already in contract with um, uh, our, our banker that does our underwriting currently to help us with our tax rate. We're already under contract with a financial advisor because um, we have uh, continuing disclosures on it. So we always have a financial advisor on, on, on hand, which would already assist us in this. Same thing with, with bond counsel. We already have bond counsel um, involved. And actually bond counsel is the one that uh, drafted this resolution for us. We don't have a communication consultant. We do not have a communication consultant, no. So I would not be okay. I would be better go at striking that off because I don't really feel we have that um, firm yet, and I don't. I think that's going a little too far right now because if we get back the results and it says, hey, we really shouldn't be doing this, then I think that's the time, the appropriate time to move forward on that component of a firm. Um, and then... 
I understand, I understand we have, you know, financial services and bond council, but would there be an opportunity for us to open that up for competition again? Because in order to get lower rates. We can, but we just recently did that. Um, Not for, for everybody? We for, did bond for bond council last council. year, we just renegotiated new rates and actually drove down the rates on that. Okay. Um, and, and, and also with our uh, financial advisor, unfortunately, you know, there's only three financial advisors mm -hmm. out there. Um, and so, who are they again? You know, so we use KNN, um, public finance um, is, is who we use. Um, there's a couple other ones out there like um, Kegent um, is another one. And there's one out in South. PFM and KNN are the only two I know. PFM is another one. They're they're primarily up north in Northern California, um, and then there's another one south. Um, the name is is missing me, but there's not too many. Um, but if if after the contract, we're we're more mm -hmm. than happy to go out to RFP to see uh, what what rates um, if if we can get b better rates than what we're getting today. Okay. Um, and then I think, um, so that's would be my recommendation. I would like to approve this, but delete and a communications consulting firm Okay. at this point. And then, um, so that's what I would like to see. But then the, I think the other, one last question I think I have, um, well, really is just a comment. I think if this is coming back in, you said May? No, later than May. What, no, later than May. I think at the same time, Kind of what um, you mentioned about laying out, um, laying out from the district what we should be talking about our successes. So I would like to see Dr. Gale come up with a plan coming May of whether it's um, again community outreach, press releases, media, videos. Um, ABC Unify has just launched a, a web series. Have you seen the video series yeah. where um, they're talking about? all the different things they're doing. They're doing video on the playground. They're doing video on the new quad. I mean, they're just really getting the information out. And I mean, um, many people know that was a very, they, they, they didn't pass it the first time. Right. They passed it the second time. And um, we have a big um, group of Cerritos voters who live in our school district. So we need to you know, do our best to educate. And I think the other thing too is I need to state that if we're going to move forward on this, the entire board's gonna have to be very involved and very engaged in this because um, that's what's gonna require it to know or to pass it amongst you know, different communities and stuff. Because I think the other key thing too that uh, Trustee Owl has mentioned, and I'm sure this is gonna be included as part of the survey, is there's a lot of taxes going on right now in all our cities between local sales tax increases, school bonds, firefighter, I mean, you name it, it's just I mean, a lot of different things out there. So I'm, I'm sure the survey will include those because again, um, what we're gonna ask voters to do in November, um, I know Bellflower is putting their sales tax on November too. Again, there's just a lot of things going on. So I just wanna make sure that the survey, whoever we hire for the community survey, um, it takes all that into account, so. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But as bef before we, can we have a quick discussion on, sure. on an item that you covered? Um, <coughs> just to your point about um, to make sure that we have as much uh, information available to people mm -hmm. for as long as possible, um, I, I would consider that perhaps we include um, the communications um, augmentation as part of this effort. Mm -hmm. Maybe we structure the contract so that if we decide not to proceed, that we don't actually spend any money on that, but that we would have them procured and ready so we could maximize the amount of time okay. that uh, information is available for folks between now and the election, which, I, you know, now that we're already in I Iowa caucus season, we're realizing the, <laughs> <laughs> the election, the results aren't in yet, but the uh, it's uh, already election season and I feel like it's gonna happen in the blink of an eye. So this communication would be for the district then? Yes. Right, for a district will. communications firm. To augment, to Maya's, augment effort, Maya's efforts yeah. to talk about what we're doing already now. And that would come back to the board or is that going yes. to be? Yes, all, all these contracts would come back to the board. Okay, so okay, so is that the same time frame in March? So we're gonna be considering two different, two different firms in May? Or um, two different 
Yeah, KPC. You, you, uh, probably for the next meeting in March, you should be considering at the very least the, the communication, not the communication, but the person that will do polling. the or polling and all that will have a, um, a discussion with Maya to see what she's able to pick up on capacity now. Mm -hmm. um, from that point on, we'll do um, a request for the communication. I think the urgent matter at that point will be the the polling uh, results and, and the real plan of whether or not we, we should be doing the, um, the bond. Um, so we'll work with Maya and that may come at, at a second meeting, mm -hmm. but the first one should be coming in, Ma in March, the first week of March, I think. Yeah, because we, we would want to get on that right away because the goal is to provide the re May we're providing you a report, and so we need to, we need to execute um, and, um, and procure a consultant quickly so we can start moving on getting the questionnaire done and getting the surveying process going so by when it comes May we can provide results back. Okay, so just to make sure, you're going to release the RFP right now. You're going to ask for people to do the survey and then the results of the survey are coming back to the board and no later than May. Yes. So the board is not picking the polling. You guys are picking it under yes. your own authority. Yes, we'll go through our Perfect. district process. Okay, and then the communications firm, you're going to put an RFP out for that too, and that will come back to us at a little later time. Yes. Okay. Got it. All right. Okay, so any other questions? All right, so we will go ahead and take um, a vote. So I forgot to uh, start with uh, Trustee uh, um, Escobar. So we're looking for a motion of approval on item 4.03. So, motion. Yes. May I just clarify? Yes. Is that a motion also to include striking the one yes. sentence? Yes, you're going to leave it as is, right? As is. As leave is. It as yes. is. All right, so we need a motion for approval. Second. Second. So, okay, so we will go ahead and ask a call for a roll call vote then. Student Trustee Escobar? Aye. Trustee Avalos? Yes. Trustee Berkey? Aye. Trustee Camacho Rodriguez? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Aye. Trustee Liu? Yes. And Trustee Press? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, so moving on to item number 5.01, which are reports and comments from district officials. So we will start with Trustee, sorry, we'll start with Trustee Lewis. So um, the only major thing to report is that uh, some of us went to Sacramento um, last weekend and we had uh, very great conversations with uh, very num a big number of people. Um, but there are three things that I kind of want to talk about just really quickly that uh, uh, you all may want to know. So as you may know, the um, state started the 115th community college known as Calbright. Mm -hmm. Calbright is an online only uh, college which currently offers only um, certificates in medical coding, IT, and cybersecurity. Uh, it's been up and running for about 18 months now uh, and their original you know, goal was to reach more rural communities uh, and one of the seminars that I went to called A Conversation about Calbright. Uh, they released some uh, information about what was occurring there and uh, lo and behold there were about maybe I want to say 300, 400 students that had enrolled so far and 113 of those were from Los Angeles County mm -hmm. which is decidedly not rural. And so we're, there's, you know, continuing conversation about, uh, you know, where the college is going to go, what the ideas are going to be like. And I asked a question about, uh, you know, what, what's the, you know, end goal and what are you going to do to partner with the other sister colleges about uh, what you are learning. And they said that they would share the research and development that they would gain from uh, some of the programs that they would start. And I asked them, well, then would you also stop your uh, operations with that after the research and development had continued? And they decidedly said no. So to me, it seems like there's not a lot of direction 
and uh, exactly what to do with uh, Jerry Brown's legacy as he walked out the door. And I think that while it's a great idea on paper, uh, there has been a lack of true investment in the uh, institution that is Cal Bright. Uh, there are quite a few hundred students, and um, I, I was reading an article that uh, Professor Llewellyn had uh, retweeted about a particular student and others like her uh, that have taken uh, one of these certificate programs and still find it very difficult uh, to find a job because Calbright as a college has not partnered with a single business or other uh, private sector or even public sector uh, institution to actually create a track for these jobs. So there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, on that, I think the conversation needs to continue on and uh, work a lot closer with the uh, sister colleges who already have some online programs, who already have many of these uh, certificates, who have partnerships. Uh, and I think trying to start it from scratch mm -hmm. and try some kind of new research and development is, um, to put it lightly, not the way to go. So uh, I look forward to a retooling from uh, the chancellor's office on this initiative and uh, hope that Cerritos College can continue to be a, uh, a pioneer as we are in uh, many different areas. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, dual enrollment and uh, that was, has been a big discussion at the uh, statewide level and there's been a number of um, you know, obstacles and uh, also successes that uh, have been discussed from a number of different uh, colleges around the state and we are one of the ones that have actually done very well in comparison to the rest of uh, the community college districts. Uh, but, you know, just seeing some of the more recent uh, numbers and classes that be are being offered at the college campuses or at the uh, high school campuses rather uh, with qualified uh, teachers, I think we can be doing uh, a lot better for the number of years that we have already been working uh, on this. And I think it's not the fault of our own uh, institution, but I think it's uh, you know some reticence from the district level at the K through 12s uh, that are not willing to change, let's just say. Uh, and I think that there needs to be a continued strong and united effort from our college campus and from some of the uh, other board members at these other uh, districts to ensure that we are offering more than just uh, remedial classes in the uh, high school campuses uh, to actually provide a pathway on the campuses for uh, these high schools for students to see that there is a brighter future than just a remedial class. So uh, I look forward to a lot more of an investment from uh, our district to ensure that this gets done uh, at the local level. And finally, when we had our discussions uh, at, the, uh, at the Capitol, uh, one of our uh, major concerns was with uh, Assemblymember Mark Berman's bill uh, that would allow students uh, to sleep in their cars in the parking lots 24 hours a day on our campus. Uh, and that Bill was originally brought up uh, by uh, Assemblymember Berman because it had worked at Humboldt State University uh, with some of their students, and it has also worked with some Silicon Valley um, uh, for-profit um, private sector places such as Google, YouTube, et cetera. We have a decidedly different demographic and a different culture down here in Southern California in case we uh, didn't notice. And so, uh, you know, that's something that we brought up to uh, the assembly member, and I think that there's kind of been some clarity uh, about that issue, and we look forward to working with the uh, assembly member and the rest of the um, state legislature to uh, work on these issues to not just propose a Band-Aid solution, but to actually provide uh, something that we have been pioneering uh, in terms of uh, student housing, which is why we have the uh, property that we purchased along with uh, Supervisor Hahn and working with Jovenes uh, uh, over on Barnwall Street, just up the, um, a couple blocks here from Norwalk, in, in Norwalk. So uh, I think providing that visual for some of the uh, members up in Sacramento to show how it's actually done in our laboratory of our college 
uh, I think has provided some inspiration from there. So uh, needless to say, uh, every time that we go up to Sacramento, I feel like we teach other people a lot more than you know we learn. We learn a lot, but we are really a pioneer, and I'm truly proud to be a member of uh, Cerritos College and to show off the work that every single one of us does uh, on campus because we truly are a leader in the state. So thank you. Wow, man, that's a hard one. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, mine was simple. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> and happy Valentine's next, just next week. But mine was more of a, uh, what is it, a public service announcement. So um, as you all know, we have elections happening across the county and certainly in our local cities. Uh, the county of Los Angeles uh, is ready um, to go pretty much to be uh, an early vote center. So if you don't want to wait until, you know, March 3rd, please walk on down to the county, down the street, and go up to the third floor, and they do have a vote center set up. Cerritos College is a vote center as well. I understand we're an 11-day vote center. And so, um, you know, there will be a four-day. I was going to say, wow, we're lucky. Uh, a four-day vote center, so there's 11-day and four-day vote centers, but every city will have at least one 11-day vote center. So you, know, you can go on to lavote.net, look for your vote center, plug in your address, and it'll tell you the three closest to you. Um, so that's my public service announcement. Uh, on another note, just you know, wanted to um, express gratitude to all the work that has been done this past year uh, with our students academically, all the good things that have happened to our students who continue to um, you know, show the best face of Cerritos College in spite of so many challenges. And to all the faculty and staff, may uh, this uh, 2020 be prosperous, may it be, you know, look out uh, in terms of you know, being healthier and certainly in supporting all the kids who come to our campus who uh, may either deserve a second chance or looking for a second chance or just a new opportunity at uh, being able to do something new in their lives. So happy 2020, everyone. See, man, you're just all the place. Yeah, I mean, might as well use the time. Um, I'll be even <laughs> briefer. Um, just want to encourage everyone to um, engage in the Black History Month uh, activities on campus. They are um, particularly relevant for black students, but I think they're relevant for all students. Um, and there's a lot of cool things to, to learn um, there. Also, to um, encourage folks that are uh, looking forward to going to the uh, Bravo Awards in Bellflower tomorrow, I'll see you there. Um, I want to congratulate the student services for their block party. We had a block party this uh, week, uh, and it was our first one ever. We had over 250 students there. We had all the student services uh, teams available. The students uh, were able to gather information of the services that are provided, uh, benefits, and so on, and they got to eat tacos. So mm -hmm. it was a win-win all around. Uh, we also, uh, Chin may uh, mention this, but we have our APIDA forum last week uh, and was well attended, also a lot of food, uh, and uh, it was a very informative event and, and, and uh, it's good to see everyone coming together and embracing different cultures and learning about each other. Um, we kicked off our uh, speaker series last Friday, uh, our first of um, series for, for the year, so it, it was well attended. Uh, we had a good time, and um, Cynthia and Eric uh, were our lecturers, and they did uh, an excellent job with their presentation, so I wanna thank them for, for their work. Um, accreditation, um, again, I think we're well positioned. I think uh, we have done great work. So uh, it's just a matter of continuing to showcase what we do and, and be available and ready to answer questions at the end of this month. And if you want to make fun of me for something else besides dancing and whatever else you make fun of me for, mm -hmm. tomorrow I will be at 11 apparently doing some double dodge that I have no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so hopefully I won't get hurt. So. Uh, <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say ditto to everything that my colleagues Double have dutch. said. 
No. <laughs> no. Be there. No. Uh, I left fourth grade a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I just wanted to say thank you to all the staff that participated on, on um, in all the events that are planned. I got to participate in the teacher track award ceremony. I thought it was very beautiful. And um, the day that we had the LA food truck, oh, that was very inspiring to see our staff, you know, and students involved in a, in a good community event. So I want to say thank you to everyone. Um, I was invited by uh, Dr. Lin Wang, and she organizes APIDA faculty and staff uh, spotlight on, on uh, is, is all, all week, but Thursday was a panel discussion, and I was, uh, um, you know, it's well attended, and I, uh, along with Annabelle and Mark, Nishi, April, and Tracy, and we shared some experience, and it was fun, and the food was great, too. Oh. Thank you. Mm. All right, Trustee Escobar. Um, we had a very successful uh, Club Info Day and Night. We were able to bring in a couple of students to get to see the different amount of clubs that we have on campus. Um, I had a lot of uh, fun and learned a lot on my trip to Sacramento with uh, uh, the lovely other trustees. There's going to be the Double Dutch tomorrow as well, and I, I will see Dr. Fierro there. <laughs> Who can win? The challenge. <laughs> um, and I want to also bring one uh, comment um, up that I got from a student at the Club Info Day, which is uh, he's a DACA student, and he would like to see that he would like to see a center where DACA students can go to for resources and have a person there to guide them for those type of things. So that's all my comment. Thank you. Um, the only thing I wanted just to um, add is just to thank everybody for being here tonight and welcome back to, um, to February's already here. Um, but one thing that Trustee Lewis mentioned um, was on dual enrollment. So with that, June 17th, we're going to schedule our study session on dual enrollment and Cerritos Complete. So we will have a good in-depth discussion about that. Um, Trustee Camacho Rodriguez and I, we attended um, the session on dual enrollment where we played the dual enrollment shoots and ladders game. But there were um, th two things which I felt were very interesting and very innovative and I of course showed told Dr. Fierro right afterwards. One, that um, they actually have an opt-out program for high school students. And this was a uh, college in Bakersfield. So they enroll every single one of their dual enroll st uh, enrollment students for 15 units automatically. And they can choose to opt out. But they, the, and the philosophy is that these students are accustomed to having a schedule like this in high school. So there's really no need for them to take any less classes in college. So it was very interesting. Uh, I talked to Dr. Farrow about that. And the other thing, um, which is really, I've been struggling with personally because I'm soon to have a high schooler, is dual enrollment classes being after school. Because for, for our family, that's gonna be a choice then. It's gonna be a choice between um, baseball or academics. Um, and while I really would love to have him do this dual enrollment classes that I'm gonna struggle with, and that was one of the recommendations is to actually have dual enrollment classes during the regular school hour. That's again, one of the ways that they have been able to have a very successful program. And the second thing is online dual enrollment classes. And Dr. Fierro, um, when um, Colleen sent us the, the list of all dual enrollment classes that are on campus right now, at all our, our high schools, there is one online camp class, and then she responded back that during the summer, we offer the rock history of rock music online as well, too. But again, those are two things that hopefully we will discuss more in June when we talk about it. But again, how do we make dual enrollment work for high school students? Um, and then the other thing, which hopefully we'll cover on this study session too, which I would love to hear the faculty perspective on this, is kind of the struggles between dual enrollment classes and who teaches. Who teaches them, and do they meet minimum qualifications, who doesn't teach them, I'm totally confused by all that. So hopefully we can talk about that too, because that was something that I still, I left thinking like, I don't really understand what they said, but I would like to know more about 
who teaches these classes? And um, one of the things they suggested was doing a faculty peer mentor program where we pay our faculty too. That was the other key thing. So the faculty would get paid um, to meet together and to mentor each other. So it was all fantastic stuff. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, also, um, in two weeks, we're having our study session on AB 705. So Dr. Fierro, don't forget to send us a list of reading materials because there's a lot of great um, research out there on AB 705. Um, so I would like to see about passing that along to our board members so when we're busy um, traveling or we have some downtime, we'll be prepared um, to kind of understand what the research t is telling us across the state on AB 705 and its implementation. Um, Dr. Fierro and I, um, we also attended the State of the City for the City of Lakewood, where I'm glad not to be in the City of Lakewood <laughs> City Council right now because they are facing a $10 million budget deficit, 20% of their general fund budget. Um, so they, are, they have put in a, a sales tax measure on March the 3rd which is getting a lot of very negative, <laughs> negative thoughts on it. Um, so that's why it all kind of funnels back to what we do here is really there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, residents throughout the district who are just no more, no more property tax increases, no more sales tax increases, um, even though I wouldn't question that they don't believe in the services that the city's providing or even the services that we provide here at the college. But again, it's just like we're pushing people to the limit financially. So I think that's something we need to be very aware of as we consider and we move forward to the next step. So, so with that, 810. Um, no. Mm -mm. Dr. Flores Chores has 30 an announcement to make. <laughs> well, uh-uh. Yes. Pro microphone, is it? 810, 810. We're, we're doing so good. <laughs> Okay, I just want to share uh, with the board that we were the recipient of the uh, 2020 ACA Award for Progress in Diversity. Yay. So at the end, no, in Ma at the end of February, we received the ACA Award, I think it's February 27. And the following Monday, we will receive a national award also on diversity uh, from the League of Innovation. So mm -hmm. two, two awards in less than a week. <laughs> wow. Do we have enough wall space for all these awards we're getting? Yeah, uh, it's just, you know, we do it for, 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 uh, no, for the recognition. Right. So thank you to everybody in Dr. Flores Church's um, group and especially our faculty because they really, I mean, they've really come a long way and done fantastic work on all the hiring committees and stuff. So I want to thank you faculty members, please pass along our thanks because really it's your work that is really changing the look of our faculty and stuff here too. So we appreciate that as well. So with that, 8-11, 8-11, we're still, we're still making good time tonight. So okay. thank you. Do we have a readout today? Two. Yes, okay, well, we'll be back.
returning from closed session, we have two readouts. Item number 6.01, it was reported that an executive that in closed session, the Board of Trustees denied the claim from claimant Mercury Insurance Company as subrogy of Eric Hoffican. Six yeses, zero noes, one absent, Trustee Salazar. The second item is, it is reported that in closed session, the Board of Trustees approved a settlement agreement with case number 92671107 and authorize the Vice President of Human Resources Assistant Superintendent to sign the agreement. The votes were six ayes and one absent, Dr. Salazar. So that's it.